Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 2022 Toyota GR86. So this is part of the second generation that started production in 2021. And uh, yeah, this GR version basically stands for Gazoo Racing, which is Toyota's like version of like AMG. And uh, yeah, they basically fettle with the cars to make them slightly more sporty than they already are. So uh, they've given it twin to dual chrome tipped exhaust, track tuned suspension, and these 18 inch matte black painted alloy wheels. And uh, yeah, also obviously the GR badges on the car as well. And uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, slightly uh, better version of the car than the uh, first generation of the 86 that we've already got on this game. So basically it's got a slightly larger engine at now 2.4 litres, still an inline 4, um, a flat 4 region, uh, and it's got 228 horsepower and 184 pounds-feet of torque. So they have the larger engine because they wanted more lower end torque to make it a uh, nicer car to drive on a day-to-day -day basis so and they've achieved that as it now has 33 extra pounds feet of torque from a lower rev range and 31 extra horsepower as well to make it slightly quicker in terms of acceleration as well weirdly though it's not actually any quicker at the, or by a large amount at the top end it's only one mile an hour faster than the, the uh, car that preceded this but you know this car didn't really need any extra top speed because that's not the point of this car. It's also still rear-wheel drive, you still get a six-speed manual gearbox and yeah it's not much heavier than the original car either. Only weighs 77 pounds more at 2,811 pounds and its wheelbase has only grown by 0.2 of an inch so uh, yeah it's no real bigger than the uh, standard car uh, from the previous generation. In fact the overall length is about half an inch or so smaller so uh, yeah the wheelbase has grown a little bit no doubt to hopefully uh, help improve the handling but the overall length is actually shorter but it's also no less practical as well as you can see it's still got a sizable boot and the uh, space for anyone in the back is also still decent enough as you can see not the most practical of cars but then again it is a sports car and it's not meant to be the most practical of vehicles it's meant to be something that's to enjoy out on the open road so uh, yeah let's get out there and see what it can do so yeah, top speed was never the main focus of the car that preceded this in the first generation. So uh, yeah, that is also the case for this. Like I said, it's only one mile an hour faster at the top end. But let's and on, let's get out onto this drag strip and see how quick we can go before we hit the speed camera. And then we'll hoon it around the track. So uh, yeah, still a pretty sharpish car. Like I said, it is quicker in terms of acceleration than the previous generation. Which is despite the additional weight. But that extra power and extra torque, especially from low down, certainly helps this in terms of its uh, straight line speed and general acceleration. So, yeah, 113 miles an hour there, which is pretty good. But yeah, this has lost none of the charm and you know ethos of the original car. It's still a uh, back to basics approach for a sports car. It's just been slightly improved in certain areas. So. The looks are different, I personally prefer them over the uh, looks of the previous generation of car. Uh, it's more powerful, it's more usable on a day to day basis with that extra torque, because torque is really well useful to getting out of junctions and the like, so to have that extra torque lower and lower down on the RPM range is really rather helpful. And uh, yeah, but it's still, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, a basic back to basics kind of sports car. So. Still got the rear wheel drive, still got the uh, six speed manual front engine layout, and uh, yeah, it's top end of uh, B class as you can see. And uh, yeah, the handling and the braking are better than before, not massively so over the handling, but the braking is definitely substantially better. Acceleration is good, and top speed is fairly solid as well. Compare it to the uh, Alpine A110, though, and as you can see, it's not quite as good as that car but that car does have far more in the way of power and torque far less in the way of weight but also it is a far more expensive car as well so uh, the Toyota is not only a uh, everyday kind of vehicle but it's also something that is you know something that can be bought by most people as well whereas the Alpine is yeah 50 grand 55 grand car in the UK at least so that is far more expensive whereas this is a lot cheaper, but no less fun. So let's get out there and see what it sounds like, and we'll talk about it some more.
So yeah, it's still a good sounding engine in this car. It's not lost any of that going for it. And yeah, it's not lost any of the kind of handling characteristics of the previous car either. It still likes to oversee um, when you want to, but also at times when you don't necessarily want to. But it's still a uh, fun car to drive. It's got plenty of old school fun to, to on offer with those with the uh, really good handling, but also it likes to slide around when you want it to, and it will hold that side really rather nicely. The brakes have been improved despite the extra weight, and yeah, it's just a generally a good round, all round fun car to drive. And the, yeah, acceleration has improved as well at 0 to 60 is now 4, 5.4 seconds. 0 to 100 is dealt with in 13.783 seconds, and it going to a top speed of 149 miles an hour. And like I said, it is only one mile an hour faster than last time, but the acceleration has been improved, which is something that you can use more on a day to day basis over the top speed. And the mid range clap is also better as well, with that extra torque helping along in that. So, uh, yeah, mightily impressive car to be honest. I'm glad that they've not gone overboard with the power or the handling or massively changed or changed at all the handling characteristics of the previous car. It handles pretty much the same as before. It's just that ever a little bit better, and um, that is always something that's good as far as I'm concerned. There's very rarely any reason to massively alter something that already worked before. You just slightly make it better. Um, yeah, the fact it's not got a massively overpowered engine now either is also still a uh, good thing. A lot of car companies nowadays will see an improvement being more power, more torque, more acceleration more top speed whereas this has slightly improved itself on those regards and um, yeah also interesting that Toyota has gone for a larger engine while not turbocharging or anything like that a lot of car companies obviously nowadays are downsizing their engines and adding turbochargers using hybrid technology and the like whereas Toyota have gone for a naturally aspirated engine that is even larger than before purely just to make it a slightly better car to drive on a day-to-day -day basis while having plenty more power to offer when going out on a track or on a uh, sporty kind of road. So uh, yeah, majorly impressed by this. Wasn't really expecting it to be much different to the previous car that we already have in this uh, game from 2013, but yeah, Toyota have fettled this in all the right places to make it that bit better. And at the end of the day, I also find it to be a better looking car as well. So you can get this car by getting 20 points in the festival playlist. Easy enough to get, and it's well worth getting this car if you're into your Toyota vehicles. And if you're into your, you know, your like sports cars in general, which I really am. You can also give it a Rocket Bunny body kit if you so wish. And there's like seven engines to choose from me so that you can swap into this if you so wish as well. So uh, yeah, plenty of tuning options for this car as well. But even the stock car is a, a hoot to drive, and uh, yeah, highly recommend getting it. Nonetheless, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.